It's time for baby and toddler instructions with host Blythe Lippman. Blythe is a nationally renowned infant and toddler expert who has over 30 years experience helping moms and dads regain their sanity, teaching them how to survive and giving them the confidence they need to be the best parents ever. From sleeping to crying to potty training to choosing a preschool and so much more. If you're a parent, Baby and Toddler Instructions is the show you've been looking for. Now here's your host, Life Lippman. Well, good morning, afternoon, evening. Thanks so much for tuning in, whatever time zone you might be in, and happy Earth Day. I do hope the weather gets better for everybody. I'm watching what's going on and Parts of the country, my gosh, the tornadoes, the rain. It's time to have sunshine every place. But I want to tell you a little bit about Earth Day before we talk about the show. Earth Day is an annual event celebrated on April 22nd, on which, on which day events worldwide are held to demonstrate the support for environmental protection. It was first celebrated in 1970 and is now coordinated globally by the Earth Day Network and celebrated in more than 192 countries each year. Wow, that's great. Um, the first Earth Day family had participants and celebrants in 2,000 colleges and universities. That's roughly 10,000 primary and secondary schools and hundreds of communities across the United States. More importantly, it brought 20 million Americans out into the spring sunshine or maybe the drizzle for peaceful demonstrations in favor of environmental reform. It's now observed in the 192 countries. And you know what? It's a beautiful day here. If it's raining, put your little boots on and jacket. Let your kids go jump in the puddles. But I did want to say happy Earth Day. And I have to say yesterday I went and got some flowers and some herbs and I planted them in my garden. I did try to take a picture, but I'll post it on Facebook. I couldn't get it to download this morning. You know technology. Yikes. Sometimes. Anyway, I do want to say it is there's so many activities you can do with your toddlers in the springtime when it's not raining, you know, get, let them plant something or buy some flowers that are already plant, planted and let them water them, you know, every couple of days. Give them the responsibility. Positive reinforcement is so great for your toddlers, for your older kids, for your teenagers. We all want to know we're doing a great job and feel like we're loved and give lots of hugs. Anyway, um, so that was Earth Day. I wanted to talk about that. Oh, also, you know what? There's some great books about Earth Day that you can read with your little ones. Two of my favorites, which are on Amazon, are The Adventures of a Plastic Bottle, a story about recycling on Earth Day, or the other one was Earth Day Every Day. And you know what? Just spending that time with your baby and toddler, set aside a little time once a week. I know we work hard, we're tired, we're cranky, our kids are sometimes cranky. But there's nothing like spending that little bit of time at least once a week. It doesn't have to be a day. It could be an hour. You could take a walk. You could, you know, cook something together. You could read books. Those are the memories that your children will take in their hearts, and they'll cherish, and they'll remember them. And I can tell you they'll come back out because my children and I talk all the time about things that happened when they were little. So also, if you do need some other activities, I just added a few of my favorites, so go on my website, mybestparentingadvice.com, and check out my favorite tips page because there are tons of easy things you can do with your kids. They don't cost a lot of money, and it's so much fun. And you know what? Always take pictures. It's so easy. We all have smartphones with cameras on them. So my guest that will be with us in just a bit is Julie McCaffrey. She's from Pish Posh Baby. I love that name. And we're going to talk about everything baby I will tell you, and she will tell you what the boba wrap is. If you saw my video, that was what the video was. Do you know what a boba wrap is? So we're going to talk about boba wrap, strollers, car seats, babies, crying, so much more. The recall list is up to date on my website, mybestparentingadvice.com. There were no new recalls this week, thank goodness. But again, I'm sorry, I'm a broken record. Make sure if you get any hand-me-downs for your children, make sure you check them that they're not on the recall list and check your toys every week. Make sure there's not any loose screws on them, you know, parts that are hanging off because everything goes in the mouth. Check the cribs. Make sure they're not wobbly. You don't need to tighten some things, the swings, everything. 
once a week, check everything, put it on your list. Something to do that takes really about five minutes. Um, a couple of things I wanted to share before I welcome my guest, Julie McCaffrey. There was a terrible, a terrible thing happened in Arizona a couple of days ago. A father left his two and a half year old in the car, and unfortunately, the little boy passed away. Now, I don't know the particulars, but he is in jail, so I don't know if it was negligence. I don't know what it is. But anyway, you know, no parent ever, ever wants that to happen. And the the thing is, it's not the middle of the summer here in Arizona. The outside temperature was 93 degrees, which is not terrible for Arizona, you know, dry heat and all of that. But the toddler was in the car for two hours. So I want to share this tip because, you know, many of us go to work in the morning and we are rushing and we have the baby bag and we have the toddler stuff and the lunches and we're going to go to drop them off at preschool. Here's a tip that you really should use. I know, you know, everybody says they're never going to forget their child in the car, but we are in a hurry and we're busy. Take When you get in the car, take off your left shoe and put it on the passenger seat. And when you, when you get to work, you know what? If that shoe isn't on, that will remind you to take your child out of the car. You are not going to, you may forget your laptop. You may forget something else, but you will never forget your child especially if you don't have a shoe on. Anyway, that's my tip today. Also, I wanted to share another story that was very interesting from the Science Daily. You know how I love to share all these current events. They're so interesting. From Science Daily, family therapists suggest that parents relearn to play. A Kansas State University family therapist has one word for parents who want to raise a healthy, happy child, play. She says, we find that parents lose the ability to play. Um, this O'Connor is a director of the Family Center, which provides clinical services to the Manhattan community. And she is a play therapist and a licensed clinical marriage and family therapist. She says learning the ABCs is important, but children need the opportunity for free play. They do. You know what? Kindergarten, they know their numbers. They know their letters. Some of them know how to read. You know, unfortunately... You know, the way our world is, they have to learn so much, and it's so much earlier. O'Connor says that the play encourages the mastery and development of the crucial C's, courage, capable, connect, and count. I love that. We want parents to help their children feel brave, to feel that they can do things, they belong, and that they matter. So playtime is a time when a child doesn't have to perform, doesn't have to tell you that he or she knows their ABCs or their numbers or they can read a word. So mom and dad, grandma, grandpa, anybody, get down on the floor and play with your kids. And not only that, it's so much fun. I mean, I always loved coloring with my children or, you know, with my son, we would do blocks or Legos. So don't put play out of the equation. It's so important, not just for your child to have fun. But you know what? For them to learn courage, capa capable, connect, and count. Also, one more thing. Let's see. We still have time before the commercial. You know how I like to share things from my books every week. So this week, I'm going to share a few tips from my chapter in Help. My Toddler Came Without Instructions, a chapter called Mommy, I'm Bored. So here are just a few activities to do with your toddler. And again, you can also go to mybestparentingadvice.com. I added some other favorites that are different than these. So here's a couple fun things. Have a, be, have a playground pajama party. Take your toddler to the playground or let her go outside in the yard in her PJs in the first thing in the morning and then either make a breakfast together or go out to breakfast. It doesn't matter if they're in their PJs. It's so much fun to do something different. Also, toddlers love chalk. And when it gets warm out, give them some chalk, give them a spray bottle, let them write on the sidewalk with the chalk. And when they're finished, let them spray it. That's a great activity that will last for a long time. And if you live in a very warm climate like Arizona, do it in the early morning or at night when the sun goes down. Um, also, one more tip. Let's see. Um, one more tip that I really always love to do with my kids was the cleanup woman. You know, toddlers love to help. 
And yes, you have to wipe things off in your kitchens all the time or it gets dusty. You know what? Give them a dust cloth. Give them a paper towel. The youngest of toddlers, two and a half, two years old, they'll, they'll say, Mommy, help. Give them something and let them wipe things and just tell them how great it is. So those are my tips today from help my toddler came without instructions you can get my books on amazon barnesandnoble.com from my website mybestparentingadvice.com and it's on audible if you want to hear it and by the way we have great shows on toginet so don't forget to listen to our other great shows we have topics on everything i love the togi people thank you yay thanks for being the producers so we're going to have a break in just a couple of minutes let me tell you a little bit about my guest her name is Julie McCaffrey. She is a parenting expert, a proud mommy to three kids, and the chief brand officer, officer at pishposhbaby.com. It's a high-quality baby store that supplies the facts and advice, along with the right choice to parents who are completely lost in the whirlwind of bur baby gear. Boy, that can really happen. There's so much out there. She's also the founder of Baby Nav Baby Planners, where she offers personalized consultations to new and expecting parents. Because she loves to help moms and dads navigate everything from baby gear, preparing for multiples, getting back to work, and even getting the whole family on a routine. So when you have a chance, take a look. Go to the pishposhbaby.com site. It's wonderful. There's the place where you can chat with Julie. They have great sales. I love the website. And, you know, there's so many things. I looked at it. If I was going to have a baby, I would want everything. Of course, as you all know, I'm going to have a grandchild any minute as soon as my daughter has that baby, my first one and her first baby. So I, I am on that site looking constantly. There's so many great things. Anyway, Julie, um, I just want to say good morning. We are going to break for commercial in just a few seconds, but I do want to welcome you to the show. And when we come back, we are going to talk about what's a boba wrap. Anyway, thanks for being on the show this morning. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here with you. Well, we will be right back in about 20 seconds. We're going to have the commercial. And, you know, I that boba wrap is something else, and I can't wait to tell my listeners all about it because I have people ask me, is it something you eat? And it's like, no, <laughs> this show's baby and toddler show. It's not a food show. Anyway, we will be right back. Here comes the music, so please stay tuned. We'll be right back with more help. My baby came without instructions. It's baby and toddler instructions with Blythe Lipman on Toginet. We'll be right back right after these. In today's business world, a helping hand or idea that doesn't come with an invoice is a treasured find. And if that happens to you, then you need to pay it forward to keep other entrepreneurs from making mistakes or getting a raw deal. It's called Paying It Forward with Josephine Girasi. Wednesday mornings at 10, 9 a.m. Central. Josephine is going to have the guests describe their accomplishments, the lessons they've learned, both good and bad, and then sharing those pieces of knowledge as we create a movement of Paying It Forward. For more information about Josephine, her business, and background, you can go to MyMomKnowsBest.com. Josephine Girasi has always been a problem solver. She saw this need and has turned it into a movement. It's Paying It Forward. With tips, tools, and advice, and hard lessons learned, these pieces of knowledge can make a huge difference for you, your business, and others. So join us for Paying It Forward with Josephine Girasi, Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m., 9 a.m. Central, on toginet.com. This is the Toginet Radio Network, radio with a cutting edge. Welcome to Geraldine Tegelov Live. The show that shares with you the secrets of redefining, reinventing, and rebuilding your life. Having pulled herself from the rubble of financial ruin and having gone on to create a highly successful career, Geraldine has become an expert in the art of transformation. She believes that it doesn't matter where you are right now, how overwhelmed you feel, or how impossible the task of turning your life around may seem. You can do it. Stay tuned as metaphysician, international best-selling author and intuitive Geraldine Tegelov gives you the inner understanding and the outer practical how-to to create your 
amazing life. Gain a fresh perspective on how to redefine, reinvent, and rebuild your life. Join Geraldine Tegelove live every Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on the Toginet Radio Network. Welcome back to Baby and Toddler Instructions with Bly Flipman on Toginet. The hour for all moms with little ones to come for great advice, encouragement, and great ideas for all new parents. Now, back to the show with Bly Flipman. Well, welcome back to Baby and Toddler Instructions. I'm so happy you could tune in. If you are listening live and you have a question for me or my guest, Julie McCaffrey from Pish Posh Baby, about any baby equipment or anything, you can call us at 877-864-4869, or you can go to the chat line, which I am on right now with Julie and my wonderful friend, Robin Boyd. So anyway, let's talk first of all you know julie again welcome i'm so happy you're on the show i do videos every week and this video we talked with my actors my lovely dogs that i dress up <laughs> we, i talked about a boba wrap and honestly people i mean my my daughter even said what's a boba wrap you know is it you do you eat it what do you do with it so <laughs> let's talk about the boba wrap first absolutely the the boba wrap is such a great piece of baby gear and it's it's not something that's complicated it's not something that you know is a big complex thing but it's a thing that can make a really big difference in a parent's life and a boba wrap is really a soft wrap so it's something that you can put baby on and really tie baby up nice and tight to you so that baby's close to your heartbeat and your voice. And it's a, it's a soft, stretchy material that's totally machine washable. And instead of having like a soft, structured carrier that, that so many parents might see around today that has buckles and straps that you have to adjust and ties to pop an infant in and out, the boba wrap is simply a really large piece of fabric um, that you can tie in multiple ways to have your, your newborn, your infant, even a toddler um, wrapped up nice and close to you. And I really love the boba wrap because it's so flexible. It's so comfortable. And I will tell you, many parents, the first time they see it, might feel a little intimidated because it, it comes out kind of looking like an extra large bed sheet. And people just aren't sure what to do with it. But it comes with a set of super simple instructions. And parents just need to practice a couple times. And once you practice a couple times, you'll easily be able to wrap up baby be hands-free, but still be able to have the baby nice and close to you. And the other great thing is is for a new parent um, and for a new mom that wants to breastfeed exclusively, uh, the boba wrap can allow mom to really easily move the baby into a position to be able to breastfeed and to be really comfortable doing so and knowing that the baby is secure in there, but it's a custom fit for mom every single time she puts it on. So it's one of those simple pieces of baby gear that can really make a big difference in a, in a parent's life. You know, also, I'm sitting here looking at this boba wrap, and it's funny because I was practicing with a doll because, I, as I said, my daughter's uh, yeah. going to have a baby, and I wanted to be able to show her. And yeah. you know what? It's really easy, and I do have to say the instructions are really easy, too, because some of the wraps, you know, I've seen a lot of them, and they're really complicated. And also, this is great because it's not – it's fabric, and it's soft, and it's not something heavy that you're dragging on your back and you can't see the baby. And, you know, because baby wearing, as I guess we call this now, has become mm -hmm. so popular, which is from a million years ago. <laughs> you know, parents always wore their babies, but they didn't call it that. No, so, it's, a, it's a movement today, and, and people feel really passionate about it. And it's a great thing for so many parents because, again, it really does allow them to keep the baby close. But to be able to, even if it's a, you know, you know, a parent that has another child, to be able to, to have two hands to take care of another child or, or just to do a, a load of dishes or, or make yourself something to eat, anything like that, it's, it's a really nice thing for, for bonding and just for parents to be able to, I kind of call it a third arm, the, the wrap, it kind of holds the baby nice and close so the parents can have both hands. And as you said, it, it's not heavy. Some of the soft structured carriers, when parents don't know about a wrap, they'll often get those. And it, it does add weight um, that it's the baby plus the weight of the of the carrier. So this is nice and light. And, and it, you can even use, you know, even in the Arizona heat, you know, it, it's not going to be so hot that you're going to be sweating with you and baby wearing. 
No, it's it's great. And you know, how many times have you heard, I can't get anything done. The baby's awake. Yeah. I don't know what to do with, I don't know where to put him or her. You know what? She's crying. I can't get the laundry done. This way, the baby's just with you and you do have your hands free. So let's back up a little bit. How did you, yeah. how did you get into all of this? Pish -posh, I love the name Pish Posh Baby. It's great. It's very fun. It's very fun. You know, I have been one of those people. I had a little brother who was 15 years younger than me, and, and so I was sort of his, you know, I like to pretend to be mommy sometimes. And, and then I was, you know, sort of in corporate America like so many young mothers are. And from the moment I, I got pregnant with my oldest, who is now six years, six and a half years old, I really like renewed my love for all things baby and baby gear. And I became so passionate and, and truly a student of baby gear. And I, I literally started kind of project planning, researching, and then I didn't just want to do it for myself. I really wanted to share this passion with my friends, the people that I was working with. And luckily, I've been able to translate uh, the time that I had in, in corporate America over to the to the world of baby gear. And, and now through Pish Posh Baby, we're supplying great product and great advice to, to many expecting and new parents because baby gear is something that shouldn't be overwhelming, but because there's so much out there, it really often is overwhelming for new parents because they're just not sure what's right for them. So through Pish Posh Baby, we've really tried to curate the product that we have so that it's a uh, product that, that we trust. It's a product that we feel is of high quality. And, and even if it has a bit of a, a higher price tag, we really feel like there's value in, in the product and what parents are giving. And, and so we really try to kind of be a, a partner for parents in this and, and kind of give a little stress relief if, if there can be some around baby gear because it really should be fun. It, it shouldn't be something that causes such a headache for so many parents. No, you know, and it's great because I know even with my daughter, it's different. You go and you're not sure what to buy. And mm -hmm. I know when you go on the phone, you go on the site, you look at the reviews, you think, is this the right one? And then you start looking at things and they have, you know, 6,000 directions. And how do you get the car <laughs> in, this, in this piece? And how do you get the base in the car? And how do you know it's right? And you know what? Yeah. You have you have such a great service, too. And also being a mom. I mean, you know, once you're yeah. a mom, you look at stuff and you go, well, this isn't so hot. We don't need this one. Or, you know, while everybody's different, there are things that actually just are tough to use. Absolutely. And, and the other thing is, is, you know, even if, you know, I, I'm sure you're, you have so much uh, experience and advice and knowledge to give your daughter. And, and so oftentimes people look at their, their mothers or their friends, but, you know, even I find that every household is unique and, and every lifestyle is unique. And so the gear that may have worked really well for someone else might not necessarily work the best in your household. And how do you know that if you've never had a baby at your house? So one of the things we love it to have at Pish Posh Baby is we actually have a team of moms who we call our baby gear experts who have been there, done, and they know we've trained them, you know, extensively to know all the baby gear. So moms, dads, grandparents can call in and say, you know, I need a car seat. And instead of us saying, okay, well, here's the most popular, we, we allow our baby gear experts extra time on the phone to ask parents questions like, well, are you going to use it in a taxi? Are you going to use it in a car? Do you know what stroller you want to use it on? So we try to get to know their lifestyle so that we can suggest to them the gear that will really work best for them and really allow parents to kind of make that confident decision, make that purchase, and then move on to the next thing on their list. That's, that's such a great service because there's so many things to choose from. So what do you think is the number one thing every mom-to-be should have on their baby registry? Is there one? Well, Are there 20? Or there, is there a favorite? I know it's You know, it's, that's such a funny thing. I mean, besides the big thing, you know, I think everyone, there's the obvious things, right? You know, everyone puts their car seat and everyone puts their stroller. You know, everyone kind of puts the high chair and, and kind of does that. I actually think not everybody does a carrier or, carrier or a wrap. And I really do think it's, um, you know, it's something that really can, can give parents some time back, allow them to bond with baby. You know, I do think it's a great thing. But, you know, there there are other things that I think sometimes parents, because they don't know to think about, don't add to their registry. And it's, it's things like um, the car seat, like a second base for the car seat. So while there might be one primary car that, you know, moves baby around or there's a family car, there's often, you know, a second person or a second car that's used. And oftentimes that's a 
kind of a hundred dollar purchase sometimes up to could be less but it could be more that that parents might just have to go out later and buy on their own but adding that to their registry allows people to kind of buy either a group gift or maybe when they buy the car seat they might also get them that second base or you know the same thing with stroller accessories if you know you you pick that stroller and you put it on there but if you're delivering in the winter did you think about adding a foot muff to your accessory if you're someone who's in an urban environment and you're going to use the stroller like a car a lot did you think to add a rain cover to your stroller so i think it's all those sort of little things that can help the big piece of baby gear work even better for your life that parents might not just know to put on their registry that i think makes a big difference and then the one thing that i think every i think should just have to go on every registry is sophie the giraffe Oh, that little so rubber teething toy hasn't changed in 60 years, and I think there's a reason. I think all babies love it. <laughs> you know what? They do because you can hold it. But go back a minute. What did you say if you live in a cold climate, a foot? I'm sorry. I, you broke up. Oh, yeah, a foot muff. So so something that you can put at the end of the stroller. Um, you know, there's there's great brands out there that make down covers, and they make them in different weights. There's some that will even grow with the baby, so they're kind of zipped up like a little sleeping bag. Um, so and so cute. you can you can put it yeah, they're great. You can put it in the in the in the stroller and it'll kind of, you know, work with the, the harness that's on there and baby can be in there. So they're not even if you know, if you need it with a coat, they can be in there with a coat, but even if you just want to be able to put baby in and kind of zip them up like a sleeping bag. And then there's some great ones. There's there's one from seven A and Infit that you can unzip and then use it through the toddler years, and it provides just coverage from the rain and the cold and just keeps baby nice and cuddled up in there in the stroller. You know what? You have to take a look to, for my listeners, especially if you live in a cold climate. I mean, I know the summer's coming and everybody's had a terrible winter, so much snow back east. But if you're an expectant mom, this is a great thing. It's the cutest thing because it looks like the baby's a little Eskimo. And then you don't yeah. have to worry. Do you have enough layers? And are they cold? It's just... It's great. You know what? I love seeing this. Not that I ever had to use it because I'm in Arizona, but boy, I remember yeah. <laughs> my, both my children were born in Maine. And I remember those winters were cold. And if, you know, they didn't have that then. You had no. 10 different layers and you finally got out the door and then the baby probably pooped in the diaper and you had to go back in the house or they exactly. spit up or they did something. So this is so easy. Anyway, we are going to have a commercial. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. We'll be right back with more help. For help, my baby came without instructions. It's Baby and Toddler Instructions with Blythe Lipman on Toginet. We'll be right back right after these. Have you heard? The pages of American Patchwork and Quilting magazine come to life on our new weekly online radio show, American Patchwork and Quilting. Join Pat Sloan, our blogging and quilt designer host, as she talks about the latest trends, ideas, and inspirations. Her guests include quilt pattern designers, authors, quilt shop owners, and our editors. All quilters, just like you. Call in with your questions. Get quilting tips from industry experts. Learn about free patterns. Hear behind-the-scenes stories from our magazines, American Patchwork and Quilting, Quilt Sampler, and Quilts and More. Get the scoop on free stuff and find out more about the best independent quilt shops in North America. To listen to a live show, tune in Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Just log on to allpeoplequilt.com slash radio. To hear past shows, go to iTunes and search for American Patchwork and Quilting Radio. We hope you'll join us because we know that quilting changes everything. Ladies and gentlemen, tune in every Monday night during the debut episode of Paranoia Texas at 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern, and you will get a chance to win some very cool prizes from McDonald's, Walmart, Geek World, Red Petal Salon, and so much more. All you have to do is listen for the cue, and when you hear this music, call in. That's every Monday night at 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern, and win those cool prizes.
Are you ready to start rocking that woo-hoo that only you do? Because Lisa Stedman is on a mission. She will dare you, challenge you, enlighten you, provoke, and empower you to bring out that inner woo-hoo. Lisa is an internationally acclaimed best-selling author. She is a breakup expert, a brand consultant, CEO of Woohoo Inc., and the Woohoo Radio Network. She will show you how to take your boo-hoo and turn it into woo-hoo. Get rebellious and get real. Get your dreams off the back burner. Get inspired and motivated to take action. Start rocking that woohoo that only you do in love, life, and business. She is going to be here for you every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. Only here on the Woohoo Radio Network. Welcome back to Baby and Toddler Instructions with Blythe Lippman on Toginet, the hour for all moms with little ones to come for great advice, encouragement, and great ideas for all new parents. Now, back to the show with Blythe Lippman. Well, welcome back. I'm here with my wonderful guest, Julie McCaffrey. She is from Pish Posh Baby, and she's the Chief Brand Officer. And we're talking all about baby equipment and gear. And before the break, we were talking about um, foot moths. And I was chatting with with Robin Boyd, who is also um, on the radio. And she lives in New Hampshire, and she was talking about Sherpa line sacks. Oh, boy, that sounds really nice and cozy. (laughs) I can just feel it. When the snow's coming down, even maybe they should make it for, you know, well, they do. They make Sherpa coats. Anyway, I wanted to ask you something, Julie, but I do want to share something first. When I yeah. do my speaking engagements, I take, I usually take a bag of goodies and get people to guess what these, this baby stuff is. It can be anything. It can be the little duck that says hot when the water's too hot, which I have no clue why you need that. But anyway, one of my favorite things to share is the PPTP. Because yes. I, for those of you that don't know, know what a PPTP is. When a, it's for a little boy, when you change his diaper, you put it over the PP, and a, you know, little boys will pee up, and you are have your face down there, and you're talking to your baby, and you're changing his diaper, and you do not want that on your face. So, there's this funny PPTP, and it always mm-hmm. makes me laugh. Anyway, and I always say, you know. You don't need to have this. If it's something you want, you can. But the minute the little boy goes to the bathroom, it goes flying because their stream <laughs> is so strong. So it really, it's very cute. They come in camouflage and all different colors. Anyway, and and I was thinking about this, and I wanted to ask, what is something that you think parents really don't need? Well, the, the thing that always comes to my head is bumpers. You know, it's uh, it's sold in so many, and new parents don't know that. New parents don't know they don't need crib bumpers. Uh, new parents, you know, want to keep that baby as safe as possible, and they're in that crib that's hard, and it's sold in so many bedding sets. And, of course, they need that to protect the baby from, from bumping their head. But you absolutely don't need crib bumpers. You shouldn't even use crib bumpers. They're they're recommended in, across many organizations not to use crib bumpers. But, you know, I actually, I actually find that there are an enormous amount of products that most people don't need. However, I feel like, just like, just like the PPTP, somebody needed that. That was somebody's necessity. Somebody was tired of getting peed on and someone created the PPTP. And I, I think most baby gear was created that way. And so somebody probably needs it, but new parents don't know that. New parents walk into a store or go onto an online retailer and they see all these categories, and I think most assume they need something from every single category, and that's just not true. Just like you said, in Arizona, you likely don't need a foot muff, but if you lived in Maine, you do. And so I think there are so many products out there that maybe some people need, but I actually don't think there's that many that work across every single but bumpers is the one that really comes to mind that I think new parents think they're supposed to have that they just don't really need. What do you think about the breathable bumpers? You know, I think that I, I, they're proven to be safer, but I, but I think they're, it's kind of like a placebo. You know, it's, it's not that soft. You know, 
babies aren't injured from from having a leg stick out of a between the crib rails. You know, I really think it's something that was really kind of made as a placebo effect for parents. I don't think it does a lot for baby, quite honestly. And but you know what? If a parent needs that because they need that peace of mind, then I say get them um, because they they have proven to be certainly safer than the soft bumpers. The, the soft bumpers too, you know, years ago before we they've changed things, you bought these adorable sets, the bumper set and the gigantically mm-hmm. heavy comforter and you mm. never want to have anything in the crib with your baby. And I I wonder if there's a study out there that actually says if a baby has ever really bumped his head and hurt himself because, you know, by the time your baby stands up they're big enough that they're not going to go flying into the rail. And if they get their leg stuck, you know, they're going to get it out. They don't break their leg. And, you know, to have things in the crib, it's not safe. The The American Pediatric Association says keep things out of the crib because you don't know. You know, the baby could get their face on it. Just the baby should be in the crib. And there's also, you know, great sleep sacks and you don't have to cover them with the heavy things. I wish they'd stop producing those really heavy comforters. Yeah, and, and you know, no, go ahead. Sorry, I was just going to say so many, so many stores. I, I find it's confusing for new parents because they it walk is. in and and it's the giant wall of those giant quilts and, and, and bumpers and some of them, you know, they're beautiful, but they're just, they're, they're not only not needed as, as you pointed out, they've been really proven to be dangerous. And unless it's something that you want to put on the floor for baby to do some tummy time on, uh, uh, you know, instead of a rug. But other than that, there's really no need for them. And, and, you know, we sell some, we sell some great sets and, and more and more companies are coming out with now sets that, that don't include them, so they're three-piece sets instead of four-piece sets, so they don't include that quilt and that bumper. And then there are really great things, like Skip Hop has a, a complete bedding set where they've made the crib sheet so that the top is still, you know, a mild print, but the side of the crib sheet that you would see through the crib railing is a really big, bold print. So it kind of gives you the effect of the look of the bumper without having that big thing in there if parents want it for an aesthetic reason. You know what? And that's genius because every parent wants their nursery to be adorable and they are. And, and you know what? Maybe they should put something in the sets that say, you know, only use the comforter for tummy time because they, yeah. it's nice to put on the floor when your children are old enough to play and to put all the toys on it. You know, if you don't want them on your floor anyway. Okay. So bumpers, let's see, where else do we want to go? What about, let's talk about You know, I know you have some great tips for first-time parents, and I'm very anxious to hear yours. I always love to learn new tips. What about what about bath time tips? Do you have any special ones you love? You know, the the uh, bath time I find such a fun topic because because I feel like it's the one thing that. And I remember, I remember when I had my first, and the first time I had to give him a bath in a bathtub or even the sponge bath, I was terrified for him. They're slippery. (laughs) <laughs> they're slippery and they're tiny and we're we're swaddling them and wrapping them up and holding them close. And then the poor little things, we're getting them naked and we're putting them just exposed. So I like to tell parents, find a place that you'll be the least scared. Even if that means that you need to do sponge baths for a couple weeks before you really get into that bath or you have a par- your partner with you or somebody with you for that first time and to set it all up. So every single piece of anything that you might think you might need have within arm's reach and just to do it quick. Babies are small. Their dirtiest parts, you're cleaning every time you change their diaper. They only need to be bathed two three times a week at the most so go in there do it quick and then use all that stuff that you've set up beforehand so that it's not scary for you and that baby's not screaming to make you I, I, I think I, I think I sweat through my shirt the first two baths I gave and I remember it being so scary so I just say to parents have it all right there and just make it short and sweet it doesn't need to be a, a big production it needs to be an easy thing for everybody you know what? Great tip. And I just want to add one thing to it. If the phone rings or the doorbell rings, don't freak out and think you have to answer anything. <laughs> they'll call back. You know what? As long as nothing's on fire, they'll call back. They'll come back. Your baby has to be number one. And have fun doing it. I'll never forget. I had the most adorable new parents and mom was petrified. I was over there helping her and it was time for the first bath. And I said, you know, this have fun. 
sing to the baby. I said, sing something to the baby, sing a nursery rhyme. And she said, I don't know the words. And I said, well, neither does the baby. <laughs> you know, it doesn't the matter doesn't what know. you say. The baby doesn't care. So That's since great. we're speaking about bath time, do you have a favorite bathtub or bath sponge? There are so many things to choose from, you know, things with temperature control. And I oh always love the sponge from years ago. They still make that little sponge that you can put in a sink or a tub. So you have, you know, you're a hand free uh, yeah, absolutely. And, and and you know that the the thing that I love, I love it across every baby gear category is is I like baby gear that will grow with a family. I don't like when parents have to buy baby gear that lasts them for a month or six weeks or even three months. So my absolute favorite bathtub is one by Boone and it's called the Boone Naked. And it kind of works like you might you might actually have something similar in your kitchen. They're kind of popular now. Those colanders that will fold up flat and then you kind of pop it out and it's silicone and you can drain the pasta and then you fold it so it fits in a drawer. That's the same idea of this bathtub. So it can be used in the sink and it it folds very flat, and then you, you, depending on if you're using an infant or a toddler, if you're using an infant, you just push the bottom of it down, and the, it gives you the proper incline for an infant, and you, again, can use it in the sink. And then when you have an older baby that might sit up, you can push the whole thing down to create more of a tub look. Then if you wanted to use it in the in the bathtub as you're sort of making that transition, it has little legs that pop up that make it nice and sturdy. And when you're all done with it, whether it's for the infant or the toddler, it folds up completely flat and has a little hook. So parents can hang it on the bath- back of the bathroom door or they can hang it up on a hook inside the bathtub. So it it's a bathtub that will get you until you're ready to actually have baby in the bathtub. But it, then it's not a big bulky piece of baby gear. Sometimes there are bathtubs out there that, I feel like you need another bathroom to keep the baby bathtub in. Oh, yeah. But this is and one that's nice and compact. Heavy. You know what? I love Boone's products. They have the greatest products. So smart. And they're so smart. They, they are smart. And I have to say, the other thing is with the bathtubs, not only they're not heavy without the water, but once you put the water in and the and the baby, you know, you get the water and, and parents carry it over and put it on wherever they're putting it in the bathroom, that gets heavy. Before you even put the baby in or or some of the tubs that have the slanted part with the rubber. Now, I found with those tubs, and again, every family is different. Whatever works for anybody is okay. I am not, you know, saying to use one thing or the other. But if there's something slanted, sometimes the baby kind of pushes his feet down and and he's not up anymore. Anyway, there's so many great products to choose from. And Julie McCaffrey from pishposhbaby.com can answer your question questions about all the baby gear or anything else because she's a mom and has three kids and we're talking all about baby gear and we're talking about what you need what you don't need we're going to break for commercial in just a few seconds and when we come back we will continue to talk to julie so stay with us We'll be right back with more help. My baby came without instructions. It's baby and toddler instructions with Blythe Lipman on Toginet. We'll be right back right after these. Are you fascinated by the stories behind the stories, the people behind their masks, the truth about people's failures and redemptions? in both their business and personal lives. Then Off the Record Secrets of with host Judy Schreiner is for you. It's people's secrets that make them interesting, but very few folks are willing to reveal them unless they trust that their information will be treated with accuracy, fairness, and respect. People have been entrusting their secrets to longtime business journalist Judy Schreiner for the last 25 years, and now she's bringing her expertise and impressive contact list Tune in and call in as host Judy Schreiner talks to guests off the record as they reveal new secrets each Tuesday at noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central. 
Finally, a show that supports women who are in the midst of a transition in midlife. The show is Second Wind. Here's what certified coach, author, and host of Second Wind, Joyce Buford, wants you to know. It's so empowering for women to hear about other women and their accomplishments. We all need cheerleaders, someone who's on our side. Second Wind is that program to help women connect with other women, hear other women's stories. In a stressful world. Find power in those stories. Learn to discover your passions and joys again. Create the life you want to live to the fullest. Join us for Second Wind with Joyce Buford. Tuesdays at 9 a.m. Central right here on the Toginet Radio Network. Welcome back to Baby and Toddler Instructions with Blythe Lipman on Toginet. The hour for all moms with little ones to come for great advice, encouragement, and great ideas for all new parents. Now, back to the show with Blythe Lipman. Well, welcome back to Baby and Toddler Instructions. You still have time to call if you have any questions for eight. Four eight zero. I'm giving you my office number, um, 877-864-4869. You can call my office, too. Anyway, 877-864-4869 if you're listening live, or you can go to the chat line on toginet.com at the top. It says chat. Happy to answer any questions. So the last segment, it's going to go really quick. So before we go on, please tell my listeners how to find you, how to find, you know, how to ask you questions. Absolutely. So you can go to pishposhbaby.com, and there you'll see uh, a live chat. You'll see where you can speak to any one of our really great baby gear experts. So we have chat. You can do email. from. We, we try to make it you can ask us questions anytime. So even if you're on pishposhbaby.com and you're on a specific stroller or car seat you have a question about, you'll see a big flag right there that says ask questions to a, to a baby gear expert, and you'll click right there, and, and we'll get right back to you with answers to any questions that you have. And it's great. I think it's on the bottom left. It's really easy. I mean, they, they yeah, answer we try in to two make it seconds. Easy. Very easy. So I will put all Julie's information, Pish Posh Baby, on my website, mybestparentingadvice.com. Um, let's see. We're, let me ask you before we go on, what's your favorite parenting tip? You know, my favorite parenting tip is really is to listen to yourself. There's so much information out there, but you know baby best and you know your home best. And I really try to tell people to listen to all of the information and then decide what works best within your house for your baby. Mothers have instincts. That's been true for it's the test of time. And, and I really tell, tell new parents and, and especially new moms, listen to your heart, listen to yourself. You know your baby, and that's really the, the best piece of advice is what you feel for yourself, for your baby. You know what? That's perfect. And if anybody else gives you advice, because they never give new parents advice, nobody likes oh. to share. <laughs> just say thank you. You know what? Everybody s- says things they mean well, and it may have worked in their family. So when you get advice, you know what? Maybe they're right. Maybe whatever they're saying, they're right. Think about it. And again, women's intuition, we have the best intuition. Yeah. So let's see. We talked about bath time tips. How about fussy babies? Do you have any special things to calm fussy babies? You know, fussy babies, I really, I always just go back to the five S's. Dr. Harvey Karp started this a long time ago, and and while I think many of them are things parents automatically do, I think knowing them kind of in list form is, is such a great thing. So swaddling, holding the baby on their side or their stomach, making that shushing noise that we all know and love that, that babies heard the whole time they were in your tummy, swinging, rocking the baby, and sucking, whether that's nipples, bottles, pacifiers. And, you know, that's going back to that boba wrap or to any wrap, I actually think it's one way parents can accomplish a lot of those things. The baby really feels really swaddled. You can get them in a position where they're really comfortable, kind of even turn them on their side because you're able to customize that fit. You can shush. They get motion while you're walking. You can breastfeed with them. I think a a, a wrap for for a really fussy baby. I have so much empathy, so much for for parents that have colicky babies or fussy babies. And and something like a a wrap and, and kind of having that list of those five S's, I think, is a way for them to really be able to to kind of connect with baby and help calm a fussy baby down. 
Those are great tips. Can you put, no, one of my favorite tips for a fussy baby is to put the receiving blanket in the dryer and warm it up. Can oh, you yeah. put the boba wrap in the, in the dryer for a few seconds? You can. You can put that in the dryer. That's that's uh, temperature is always like my six. If 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 I could get it to start with an S, temperature is always sort of my six. And and I actually find this time of year that's such a an interesting thing. We we transition from the seasons, and we often get really excited to you know throw the jackets down and and get into to our t-shirts. But but baby, they can't regulate their temperature, and and they may not quite be ready for that. So something like a warm boba wrap, a warm receiving blanket, and and you know sometimes. Sometimes even in the winter, a baby, they can get hot really quick and, and they can't do that. So just a little window of fresh air, just stepping outside for one second, holding the baby and letting them breathe some different air and getting a different temperature is also such a great tip to, to calm a fussy baby. Julie, you're so great because those are my favorite tips too. And sometimes if there's <laughs> nothing you. wrong, you know, if there's really nothing wrong, they're just having a cranky time. It's kind of like when you go outside or just open the door, they go, whoa, and they forget they're crying. Yeah. Especially with exactly. an baby. Also, you know what? When you first bring your baby home, I mean, touch their nose, see if it's cold or their little hands or feet. And usually as they get bigger, rule of thumb is if you're hot, they're hot. I mean, this boba wrap's wonderful, but depending on where you live, again, you don't have to put the baby in three layers and then put them in the boba wrap. Exactly. You know, and you'll get to learn, even though new parents, you'll get to know your baby. I mean, I know you come home, you're overwhelmed, you're overtired, the adrenaline's still pumping, but you do get to know exactly what your baby wants. And yes, That's they cry, but advice. it's okay, they stop. <laughs> <laughs> they do. <laughs> Absolutely stop. Um, Let me quickly, let's talk a minute about cribs there's so many choices do you get a convertible crib do you get you know do you get a bassinet first what do you think you know, I think the great thing is I think parents get really nervous about safety with cribs. And the one thing I want to say to parents, it's the one thing where I would tell them not to worry because they're regulated so super strictly. As long as they're buying a new market, brand new crib, it's the one thing that they can really say, what's my budget and, and what look do we want? And they can truly shop that way because thankfully we've removed so many dangerous things off the market that they can really just go and trust that it's safe, which I really love for parents not to have to worry about that. So they can say, what's my budget? And, you know, the convertible crib, I find such a funny thing. Often, you know, a convertible crib is more expensive, so sometimes people budget might just not allow it. But sometimes people might say, you know what, that seems great. It's going to last us a long time. But I think what people don't realize about a convertible crib is they need to ensure that they have the convertible set. And then oftentimes it turns into a full-size bed, not a twin bed. Do you have room for a full-size bed? Like the room that they'll be in, a, like a nursery, if that's going to become their room as a toddler, can it fit a full-size bed or do you need to have a twin? I know so many parents that invested in that convertible crib and then the, the headboard and the footboard are in the garage because they've just not been able to accommodate it. So I say to parents, what do you love the look of? Is it a place where you want to add some pops of color because some cribs now are amazing. They have fully lucite cribs that are see-through, have puff color, you know, so many fun things that parents can really design their nursery around. So I tell parents, what's your budget? Really, what do you want it to look like? Um, and and the, the bassinet is such a great question because parents, you know, it's, it's really recommended uh, through so many organizations, including the American Academy of Pediatrics, that we keep the baby in the room um, for six months now. And so it's often not um, going to work to have a full-size crib. So there are so many great uh, bassinet options out there that will last, but some of them uh, are really for look, and, and they might only last maybe three months or, or four months because of the weight. But there are other options out there. There's a product that I love um, by Baby Home, and it's called the Baby Home Dream. And it is a bassinet that is made to be deeper, so it's really made for a baby to be in it for six months, and it's got a bit of a smaller footprint. And so it's something that you can have in your room with you if you wish to have the baby in the room, and then you can have that big fancy crib or, you know, the big bright color in the, in the nursery that you want to design around. Those are really good tips because it can be overwhelming. And again, yeah. you know what? It's back to what works for you. you know, it can be overwhelming, and you can always go to pishposhbaby.com, and you can talk to Julie or one of her, her mom group, 
and they'll tell you what they liked and may, you may like it, you may not like it, but I, I just know it is overwhelming and that's great, especially with the bassinet. The thing I found with the bassinets or the cradles, you know, the babies grow really quickly and if you mm. have a long baby, all of a sudden you're going to look in there and go, wait a minute, their feet are at the end. Now what do we do? We're not ready to put him or her in their room yet because that's another whole ball game that's a little scary. So. <laughs> Uh, uh, that's a whole transition. We could probably spend an hour talking about that transition oh, yeah. for parents. How old are your children? So uh, my oldest is six and a half, and then I have twins that are uh, just over five. You're very busy. Yeah, they're they're. I am very lucky with my three little ones. They are happy little people, and I and I they they were. It was a little crazy. They were um, all eighteen months apart, so I had three uh-huh. very little ones. But now I'm I'm transitioning into a time where they're little buddies, they're little friends. It's it's not all sunshines and rainbows, believe me. We we have our fair share of of fusses and fights, but it's so fun to watch them to watch them grow and and start to become little people that are that are friends with each other. What fun. And they do. They yeah. grow up so fast. Well, Julie McCaffrey from Pish Posh Baby, I'm going to have to say goodbye. The show is almost at the end, and I am so excited you've been on. Thank you so much. I would love to have you come back because things change all the time. The baby gear changes all the time. And oh, yeah. you know what? I would love to invite you back again. Thank you. I Thank you for having me today, and I would love to come back. I am always, I, I say I'm a baby gear nerd. I'm always happy to talk about baby gear and, and new parents. I, I, I would love to. Thank you. Well, thanks. You have a great rest of your day, and I will put all your information on my website, mybestparentingadvice.com, and we will talk to you soon. Enjoy your day. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Wow, what a fun and informative guest you know what i was looking things up while julie was talking and i was looking up the um the boon naked and the baby home dream such great products terrific things you have to go pish po- to see pishposhbaby.com there's wonderful things on there um next week my guest will be dr ryan wilk he's from the rhino family chiropractic practice He's a great chiropractor who helps expectant moms. He does pediatric chiropractic. And let me tell you, you know what? My daughter has had so many visits to a chiropractor during her pregnancy, and she said they just really help. And I know they have special tables. You know, if you are going to go to a chiropractor, make sure that they deal with expectant moms. And also we're going to talk about after the baby's born. You know, do you take a baby to a chiropractor? I know many chiropractors say it's so important because that journey is not so easy coming into this world. Anyway, Dr. Ryan will be my guest and uh, put it on your calendar. Also, don't forget to go to Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Google+. I'm on everything. I just added new tips. I add new blog posts all the time. Love what I do. I do lots of pictures. Anyway, please like my pages on Facebook, um, Best Parent Advice and Baby Instructions, and go on Twitter and follow me, and you can always ask me questions. Contact my office, 480-510-1453, to schedule a consultation. So I would like to leave you today with these little gems. Mom says, you're making it difficult to be the parent I always imagined I would be. And a preschool teacher says, and she's in the three-year-old class, she goes, I work with children, so I know what you did last night, and so does the rest of the class. That's what she says to the mom when she drops the three-year-old off, so be careful what you say in front of your three-year-olds. And finally, remember... Diaper spelled backwards is repaid. Think about that one. So thanks so much for tuning in. Have a great rest of the week. Celebrate Earth Day today if you're listening live, and I will see you next time. So thanks. Bye-bye.